We're continuing in our study of the parables of Jesus with the parable of the wheat and the tares. Yesterday we concluded with Jesus explaining to his disciples that the tares, the sons of the evil one, were going to be removed out of his kingdom. We also saw that Jesus identified these tares as the apostate first century Jews who he told in John chapter 8 that they were, quote, of their father, the devil. He exposed their unrighteousness by exposing their desire to kill him and said that they were acting on what they had heard from their father, who was a murderer from the very beginning. Now, what was it about Jesus that so stirred up this murderous hatred among the first century Jews? Isn't that a question worth asking and finding an answer to? Jesus knew they were going to kill him, and he also knew that it couldn't happen until the exact moment set by the Father in order to fulfill all of the Messianic prophecies of the Old Testament that were given to Israel. The first century Jews had evolved into a corrupt religious system that was primarily interested in their wealth, their endless genealogies, and focus on their Jewish bloodline, their temple, their priesthood, and their belief that they, under their promised king slash messiah, would rule the entire world. They actually believed that they were superior to all other people on the planet. And Jesus exposed them for what they were and announced that he had come to fulfill all prophecy, which included the launch of his messianic kingdom that would open the kingdom of God to all people everywhere, every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every race, through repentance and faith. And with the launch of his messianic kingdom, the righteous remnant of Israel would receive the promises made to the fathers, salvation, the forgiveness of sins, an eternal kingdom, and the people would be freed from the religious hierarchy of the corrupt priesthood, and they, the people, would become a kingdom of priests unto God. And God would live and dwell among his people, and they wouldn't have to go through another man to get to God. They would approach him directly. Simultaneously with the salvation of the righteous remnant of Israel would come the destruction of the apostates, the destruction of their holy city, the destruction of their precious temple, which they actually loved more than they loved God, the destruction of the priesthood, the destruction of their Judaistic system, and very significantly, the destruction of their genealogical records that they placed so much trust in. Now, immediately following Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist, he spent 40 days in the wilderness, and he went through an intense testing by the devil. The scriptures say that he returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit, and he began teaching in their synagogues, and it began his public ministry at the age of 30. One of the first places he went to was his hometown of Nazareth. And he went into a synagogue on the Sabbath day and was given the book of Isaiah to read from. And we pick up the story. It's found in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, we'll start at verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he'd been brought up. And as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath. And he stood up to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And he opened the book and he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Now, this is a direct quote from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. And what's interesting is that the phrase, quote, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, has no period after it. In fact, it is the first words of a sentence that ends with, quote, and the day of vengeance of our God. Now, I don't think Jesus simply stopped mid-sentence. The favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God went hand in hand. We'll pick it back up at verse 20. He closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. 
And the eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now remember what we said in a previous video teaching. When a New Testament writer or speaker quotes from an Old Testament passage of scripture and declares that it is now being fulfilled, that is the fulfillment. Jesus is declaring that the fulfillment of the Messianic prophecy of Isaiah 61 is being fulfilled in him and was being fulfilled right then. And slowly, the crowd begins to turn on him. Again, verse 22, And all were speaking well of him and wondering at the gracious words which were falling from his lips. And then they were saying, Isn't this Joseph's son? I mean, haven't we known him? He grew up here. We know his parents. In verse 23, he said to him, No doubt you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we heard was done at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is welcome in his hometown, but I say to you in truth, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was shut up for three years and six months, when a great famine came over all the land, and yet Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. And all the people in the synagogue were filled with rage as they heard these things. Now, why were they filled with rage? Jesus is announcing that his kingdom is not for them. There were many widows in Israel, but God sent Elijah to a widow in a Phoenician city. And there were many lepers in Israel at the time of Elisha, but only Naaman, a Gentile, a Syrian, was cleansed. And so, verse 29, they got up and they drove him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill on which their city had been built in order to throw him down the cliff. Now, this is the very first days of Jesus' public ministry, and the Jews are already seeking to kill him. Why? He claims to be God, and he claims that the day of vengeance had come, and they were going to be the recipients of God's vengeance. They were going to be destroyed. And when it happened, they would know that he is the Lord. But then verse 30 says, passing through their midst, he went his way. Now, this is a powerful, powerful moment, and one that we must grasp. When an Old Testament passage is quoted and claimed to be fulfilled by the New Testament writer and speaker, and in this case, Jesus himself, the entire passage is in mind, not just the specific words that were quoted. And as Jesus reads the opening verses of Isaiah chapter 61, it is clearly a messianic prophecy and the longed for coming of Messiah was going to bring about a new covenant. It was going to bring about salvation. It was going to bring about the forgiveness of sins. It, the people would become priests of the Lord and the corrupt priesthood and sacrificial system would be done away with. And the righteous remnant would recognize the promised one. And the apostates who loved their position, their power, their temple, their wealth, they hated him. And they had to destroy him. And they really thought that killing him would solve their problem. They didn't listen to his words. Destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up again. And then from hereafter, as he said to Caiaphas on the night of his trial, from hereafter, you'll see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. 
Jesus did exactly as he said he would do. And even those who pierced him saw him come. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed. I'm going to tell you, the ones who were oppressed were the righteous remnant who were being oppressed by the apostate Jewish leadership to proclaim the favorable year of our Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today, and I hope you'll be with me again right here tomorrow morning as we continue our study of the parable of the wheat and the tares and look further into what Jesus had to say about the kingdom. Why not click on the subscribe button in the lower right corner of your screen and you'll be notified in YouTube whenever a new video gets posted. And if you're watching on Facebook, consider sharing this on your wall and invite your friends to watch it. Hey, I hope you'll go out and make today a great day. God bless you.